So, very good evening and welcome back to the Bronco Studio once more. Once more, because it's unfortunately the, the last webinar of this first series of a total of 10 webinars. Well, I run them twice each, so 20 webinars. Um, today it's about commercial photography. Let me just explain quickly what's the plan for today. I picked a quite a demanding object today. It's a black perfume bottle. And the, the problem is that it has a shiny part. So the upper part of the bottle, I hope you can see this, it's very shiny, super polished. The lower part, however, is black. And so this uh, requires two different approaches regarding the lighting. And to make it a little bit easier, I will shoot the black object on a black underground, which is in the moment just um, a black acrylic. Later on, um, you can see it has already a frame around. So um, this frame should be more or less waterproof because I will pour a little bit of water in it and add some graphical elements with a couple of, uh, with some waves that I'm going to provoke all around the bottle. Right. Um, yes, um, I just want to show this now, otherwise I forget it. I prepared the bottle a little bit just below here on the front. Below there is a couple of layers of gaffer tape. This makes that the bottle is not standing 100% um, vertical, but just tight, uh, tilt a tiny little bit towards the back. Like this I have more chance that my main light for the shiny part, which is this acrylic, I will explain it more precisely later on, actually reflects. It was when I was setting up the shot, it was working perfectly when it was just on the black acrylic because I could actually use the, uh, the, the shiny, also the, the transparent acrylic from the very beginning on. But now with this um, frame around, I lose here a centimeter. So that's why I have to tilt the bottle backwards. Okay, so this just because I forgot to explain this in the morning at the right moment. But first of all, I would like to go over there because I have um, prepared another setup. I will, however, not shoot the other one. I will just uh, let you see um, how I build up the light, explaining it very, very quickly. I will run over to the computer and let you see the, the final result. And after these um, five, 10 minutes, actually we start uh, shooting this bottle here and this we really do as you might be used uh, to it from my uh, seminars or workshops step by step I will start with one light add a second one and the third one until in about an hour from now hopefully we have the perfect shot in the camera okay um, I will as I said I will explain this then I will prepare all the lighting for that but not work with the water yet this we do at the very very end so after having the light more or less ready I will uh, answer a first round of questions and I will uh, then I will actually finish the shot and then we go for the the, the last uh, um, round of questions so you will definitely have the chance to ask me anything um, preferably specific about this shooting today Right, so let me um, grab the camera. I will bring you through the studio to this other setup. This will be a little bit uh, a bumpy ride for you guys. I'm sorry for that. No stabilizer in the moment. Okay, so that's the baby you are going to use later on. Medium format camera with 150 millimeter lens. And then we go here first. Let me put you on the stand and check the view. Okay, this kind of makes sense. Right. Okay, so what's um, what's set up so far? It's a, a Pico light. I'm just sitting behind it. That's not a good idea. So Pico light with uh, Fresnel spot attachment, focused and on top of this uh, Fresnel spot, I'm going to put a, a glass plate. This is my working table. It's like a micro light table in the end. Then blue filter, because I would like to have the, the effect of this light should be blue. So I, I write, right now I put this on. Blue filter, then the actual background. It's a, a black cardboard with a, a hole. I cut out a hole. And this hole is, of course, just a, a little smaller than the, the bottle itself. 
So I put this here. And now if I would put the, the bottle directly onto this hole, I mean nothing happens. I just close it so it doesn't really make sense. So it has to it has to float a little bit. That it does this properly, I keep I have here just a piece of plastic, a distance holder, I put this on. And oh yes, now if I put the bottle now on again, it's it will reflect maybe a little bit, but I will work with reflections from a black bottle and as we know, black doesn't reflect too much. Again, away, and I put a little bit of a white cardboard as well, smaller than the bottle. I put this on top of it, and finally, the bottle on top of it. So that's the setup, the start of the setup. So why this? It's a very small object. It's maybe 10 centimeters. And if I would like to control the illumination of the background properly, I mean, even with the smallest um, honeycomb grid, so with the most precise honeycomb grid, like the narrow ones, I can only uh, illuminate a very large area, but I need something smaller. So I actually use this construction only to illuminate the background. So I'm illuminating the white uh, cardboard below the bottle with the pico light uh, through the blue filter. And then this white cardboard reflects back to the surface it's on. So, and that's actually, um, I think, a very nice approach to illuminate backgrounds uh, behind very small objects. The main light will be an acrylic plate, quite close to it. I hope you can still see it. Let me turn it a little bit so you can see this better from the camera perspective. So, something like this, as close as possible, but just uh, in a way that I can still see the entire bottle uh, when I'm vertically above the, the object. Um, maybe sometimes if you're really above it, maybe it makes sense again to tilt it just a tiny, tiny little bit uh, towards the acrylic that we have more, that, that life is easier when controlling the gradation over the bottle. Illumination for this acrylic is a softbox, so it's a small softbox, a 35 by 60, and I would mount it like in this angle, so that here we have a lot of light and then a nice gradation wrapping around the bottle. So I just leave this here. As I said, I'm not going to shoot this. Just explanation that we see the setup. And then last but not least, uh, fill in for the, the cap. I leave the bottle itself, I leave it black, but the cap, it's actually very nice if we could show the roundings a little bit more. So that's why I bring here uh, a small mirror, right? And this mirror comes from the other side, just not on the height of the bottle, just up here on the height of the cap, because I want this reflection only on the cap. Now, why, why a mirror and not a white cardboard? Um, because I would like to recycle the, the gradation I get here from that side. So this acrylic is unevenly lit. And now if I have here on the other side just a white piece of paper, of course this piece of paper would be illuminated more or less evenly, and I would just get a boring highlight here somewhere. But using a, a mirror, first of all, lets me to, con uh, to, uh, to have a controlled reflection only on the on the cap of the bottle and not on the, the body itself. And the, the, the filling light will, will show a gradation because it's recycling the gradation from the main light. So it's in the end, it's a very, very simple setup. Softbox and the Pico light uh, shining through the background. And I will show you now the final result by let me share the screen with you. Okay, not this one. That's the one I want. And I want to show you the screen of Photoshop. There we go. Let me check my control screen. Yes, now you have it. Okay. So, um, that's exactly the result, of course, with a little bit of retouching, but lighting-wise, it's exactly what you have seen before. So the, the blue background, this is just this little yeah, white cardboard below the bottle reflecting the, the pico light who backlights it. Then the gradation, 
the, the acrylic coming from the left, wrapping around the, the round shape of the bottle and then fading away into black on the bottle itself, but then doing here the same. And on the other side, that's the reflection of the mirror. And this is the reflection uh, that I said before, this would be just boring, even just a white line, if you are using a white cardboard instead of um, a mirror. Additionally, if this is just a piece of paper, I would definitely get some unwanted, uncontrolled highlights as well on the right side of the bottle. So in the end, it's nothing else than two light setup and a lot of patience and um, getting everything in the right position. All right, so we close this and put it away. And we go back to the studio. Right, so let me tour you quickly through the studio. What else do we have? So that's um, for a little bit, oops, what happens now? So just, uh, I don't know what this was, but it's not an effect I want to see. Okay, sorry for that. So that's the, the setup. So we see my, my pool, it's really just about the one centimeter here of, um, of frame around. So just uh, where I can put in a little bit of water, the object itself, then the acrylic, uh, white acrylic, doesn't matter if it's uh, matte or shiny. Below the acrylic, I'm going to backlight the acrylic with a pico box. Pico box is just a very narrow, very evenly lit um, area light of about 15 by 25 centimeters, more or less. Super, super evenly lit. So this will be responsible for the, the shiny part of the bottle, this area. But uh, this light, of course, will never be strong enough to illuminate here, down, down here as well, the, the matte part of the bottle. So for this area, we have uh, a second pico light, which is here the, the pico light with a projecting attachment. And this projecting attachment has here templates. I can put these templates in or out. I will show you the effect later on to illuminate just the area that I want. Okay, and then in the end, I can as well uh, have this, I can choose if this projection should be sharp or, um, or out of focus with the, with the focusing of the lens. Okay, good. Then on the background, probably the first light we start with is a P70 on the background, right, with a narrow, angle of the, with a super narrow grid. You see how deep the grid is, so the light really comes out almost parallel, illuminates just a very, very limited uh, amount or area on my background. The background, maybe you see this down here, is maybe just uh, two and a half meters. So from the light to the background, I have about two, two and a half meters distance. So it's actually quite far away. And that's why it's important that I uh, have a very narrow grid, otherwise I illuminate too much of the background. You will see uh, the precision of this light um, later on when I start working with it. Let me bring you back to the other side. So um, last light is this one. Let me check if you see it. Okay, there, there it is. Eh? Sorry for that. Okay, so this is a P70, as well a normal reflector with um, narrow grids, not super narrow, just the, the normal narrow one. And the, the trick is, uh, I can show this already now, uh, the trick is to have this light below the table. Because uh, if this light is below the table, it will not hit any object that's on the table. Okay, so these are the four lights. Um, on the right side, you see um, two Pulsar G heads, both equipped with a P70 normal reflector and narrow or super narrow grids. And then two Pico lights that are responsible for um, the object itself. Right, let's get started. Um, I would like to start with the background. 
Um, background P17 normal um, normal reflector narrow grids should create here a kind of a, a halo, a halo around the, the bottle. Just a very limited um, part of the acrylic should reflect. All the lamp heads, pico lights, and pulsar G's, they're all connected to Scoro 1600 joules, Scoro 1600 S Wi Fi. Max power 1600 joules. Um, this is most probably the highest power. It's on eight now, which means 1600, 800, 400. So this one is 400 joules, and this is um, quite sure um, that this is going to be the the highest power of the entire set. So having two um, score of 1600 is by far enough. Power wise, only one power pack would already be enough, but the scores have uh, three outlets and I need four lights, so that's why the second one is already waiting there. Good, um, talk about the camera. I said medium format, it, it's a Hasselblad today. Uh, it's a H6D with 50 megapixels. And the, the more important thing is the lens. The lens is 150 millimeter. Most of the time I shoot with a 120 millimeter, which is actually, which is actually my favorite focal lens for medium format. In this situation, however, I prefer to have a longer focal length, so that's why I went to 150, because I have a more narrow picture angle. So this allows me to work here on a smaller set. If I go, uh, if I go wider with my angle, everything here becomes bigger. I mean, I have to work with a larger acrylic. I have to, here there's more dead space behind it where I cannot work with reflections. I need a larger acrylic and so on and so on. So with all these kind of reflective objects um, um, and uh, where you actually where it's very important that I can work on the right position with my lights it's important that I have a long focal lens this means the blocked area in the studio is very very narrow and I'm very free moving around my lights so that's why we have here a 150 millimeter uh, lens which is not a macro lens and that's actually the shortest distance so you will see in the end that I have to crop a little bit but this is uh, actually quality-wise not a not a big deal because it's just I can't uh, focus when I'm closer, so we leave the camera where it is. You will be able to see the the settings of the camera all the time on my um, on the window. I will share the the focus uh, window with you later on. I will probably shoot around 16, 16 and a half aperture-wise uh, shutter speed. I don't care about the shutter speed today. Most of the, um, it's a 125th of a second, but as we are shooting strictly with flash only today, I do not really care about the shot speed on the camera. It's irrelevant. Uh, ISO 100, and about the color we talk later. Good. So, um, time for a first test shot. Let me open focus and share the corresponding window with you. Okay, so here we go. I hope you have it, yes. Okay, so as I said, uh, okay, it's 16 ISO 100, which is the lowest value on this camera. Battery is charged, which is a good sign. Time 125, um, manual focus anyway, and um, F16. Good, so ready for test shot. Good, it fires, it flashes, that's good news. Okay, would be nice if my object was in the middle of the shoot, or am I cropping maybe? Yes. Okay, so just uncrop that you see everything that I'm actually shooting. Nevertheless, um, camera seems to be quite right position. Bottle can go a little bit to the left. Right, something like this. Shoot again. Right, okay, makes sense. Good. So, fine adjustment of the background. Um, so, I just push now the background a few centimeters to the right. So, it's really just a tiny, tiny little bit. And you will immediately see how big this change will be on the shot. Okay, so forget about this one. 
All right. So before, now, before, now. Okay. So and now imagine if I had not the super narrow grids, if I had wider grids, you can see um, that it would immediately illuminate almost the entire, the entire background. Of course, I could go closer with my with my light to the background, but then again, the same problem as expect uh, as explained before. Sooner or later, the the lamp head will appear in the photograph. So having the lamp head pretty far away from the background and using the long focal lens on the camera allows me to have the light out of the picture, and at the same time, I can control it very nicely. So if I if I correct it back to the left. I hope that I bring it back to the correct position. Now it's too much on the left. It's really just a few centimeters that I move this on the background. It's really a tiny, tiny movement. Come on. Just make sure that the, the contact here is safe. Probably I didn't put synchronization nicely on the camera. Let me check this again. Okay, good. So, background seems to make sense. Um, if you want to change it um, in the vertical sense, it's a slightly different story. So, left, right is easy. If I want to have the reflection on the left, I move it to the left. If I want to have it on the right, I move it to the right. It's exactly, um, it's something, uh, it's a different story if we talk about the vertical corrections. If I want to have the reflections lower, I have to bring the light higher here. So if I go just a few centimeters higher with my lamp head, the reflection will be lower in the photograph. Not a dramatic change, but still possible, uh, still detectable. Eh? So I leave it where it is. Left, right, still makes sense. Do not worry about all the scratches on my on my table. It's a very old acrylic, but I will pour water in it. So I don't have to clean it. Uh, water will do this job at the very end. What I do not like, I can already indicate this now, is the illumination here on the shoulders. Okay, so this is kind of uncontrolled. Okay, the the, the quality of the of the glass of this perfume bottle is uh, quite low. Um, so it's not 100% even, it's not really flat. Um, so I will have to take care of this uh, later on additionally, because the gradation that I have in the background now, right now, of course, reflects here as well. And then you see all the uneven texture of the glass. So that's not really what I want. That's why I take care of this uh, separately later on. For, for the moment, I leave it. Okay, next light is probably, if you want to say so, the main light. Let me unshare the screen so you can see what I am doing next. All right. So that's the one we have been adjusting right now. And now number two is the Pico box from the same power pack. So this is the cable, same power pack. And why not the pico box directly why the acrylic as i said the the quality of the light uh, not not the, the quality of the light is very high the quality of the the bottle is actually quite quite poor okay so if i have if i use the sharp edged pico box directly on the surface you will see all the the unperfect um shape of the bottle you will have a very unpleasant reflection. So that's why I'm going to soften the edges a little bit with the distance between the pico box and the, the acrylic. I have a certain distance, so it's not sharp edged anymore. We have here a little bit of a gradation and this kind of is hiding a little bit the, the unperfect shape of the, the bottle. Which means I can make another test shot. All right. Um, yes. Share screen. Here we go. I see there are already questions coming in, but let me finish um, the shot first and then I'm going for the questions. Okay. Next one. Two lights together, the main light as well. 
So here we go. Um, you see this little part here? Here it's a little, um, it's not, not perfect yet. Okay, why? What is this? This is the frame. This is the frame of the pool in front of the bottle. So this means that my, um, my gaffer tape that I put below is just uh, not enough. It has to be a little bit more tilt backwards. Now, again, I thought it's enough, so I put the... Oh, sorry, you don't see it. I explain it, but you don't see it. Okay, so this bottle has to be tilted a little bit more backwards. So what I see here, these uh, disturbing little black black edges there are nothing else than a reflection here on um, of this of this frame. Maybe I can glue it all the way down. Maybe this already helps. This, of course, would be great. But uh, I don't know if it's my lucky day. It's better, but not perfect. Okay, so I need uh, more gaffer tape. Right back. All right. So just don't want to leave any fingerprints on the bottle. Hmm. All right, maybe one more should be already enough, I hope. Let's try this again. I will let you see this. Yep, okay. So going back to screen sharing, focus. Okay, so that's the problem we had before. This and now just a tiny, the, I don't know, one tenth of a millimeter tilting backwards solves the problem. All right. I had in the morning, I had the question, how much time do you spend on lighting? And when do you say, okay, that's it. I do the rest in Photoshop. And um, that's pretty much uh, the, the answer to the question. When I see or when I think that I have solved the problem in like 30 seconds, I will definitely do it in camera. Of course, um, especially those who, who know me the way I work, um, know that I spend a lot more time in camera with the lighting instead of Photoshop. This is just, um, the reason is um, I'm, I'm, I'm old enough that I uh, had to go through all analog photography. So uh, Photoshop was, let's say, the last, uh, or retouching, digital retouching was the very last step if you really couldn't solve the problem. Um, but I'm much better with lighting than with Photoshop. That's, uh, that's why I spend much more time to get it done in camera. And that in the end, I just have to make finer, uh, um, uh, minor adjustments in, in Photoshop. And I have the impression that when I get it done with the lighting, when I get it done in camera, it looks just better. It just looks realistic. It, it definitely looks better than if I would retouch the, the, the picture. Because as I said, I'm not a, a Photoshop crack, but I know more or less what's going on with the lights in the studio. Right. Um, I don't see a problem, but it's always, uh, let's say in my eyes, it's always a ground rule that um, when I have something like lit areas around in my set, I always cover them black. All of a sudden, this reflects somewhere in the set. I don't know where this reflection is coming from. So I just make sure that, um, um, that I cover the, such large areas that can create problems, I cover them black. Right, next slide would be the projecting attachment for the uh, for the lower part of the bottle. So that's this one. Again, I connect it to the same pack. By the way, these two Pico lights, they are on power 6.5. So we have an 8 on the background. We have a 6.5 on these two. So this is somewhere around, um, this we said it's 400, 200, so about 150 watts. Uh, watt seconds, of course, sorry. Uh, watt seconds or joules. Now with this one, I would like to show you a little bit what I can do. First, I'm going to close my templates. 
quite a lot. Let's do something like this. On the other hand, I gave it an extra or two extra stops so that you can see properly what I'm doing. Okay, go back to the software. Then we zoom out. And I shoot the next one now with the, with the, the Pico. And that's what this uh, projecting attachment is doing now. On purpose, I, I, of course, I gave it uh, two extra stops that you can see properly what I'm doing. And you see how precise you can actually work with this. If I want, I can only, I could only illuminate the A if I want to. So you really can actually control your lights pixel-wise almost. It's the most precise light shaper, of course, together with the, the Pulsar Spot 4, which is a kind of a similar object. The, the Pico light in this situation has the advantage that it's a very tiny light, that it's not uh, blocking a lot in my setup. So this is definitely for small objects. Um, it's a must in my eyes. So whenever I shoot uh, watches, uh, small bottles like this, uh, details from all our lamp heads and, and power packs, um, projecting attachment is always in the setup. So I don't want to illuminate uh, here the, this, this writing only. I would like to have this light spread a little bit more naturally all over the, all, all over the lower part of this bottle. So that's why I'm going to open the templates again. For this, I go for full modeling lights. So I see better what I'm doing. So I open the upper one, lower one, straight. And then here we go to the right. Good. So modeling lights in this situation is uh, is nice that I know more or less what I do. But of course, the fine adjustments, I have to do this with test shots. So let's have a look what this light is doing now. All right. Good. So um, down here, I see now my gaffer tape. Eh? So the last one, I didn't really put this on properly. My hope is that uh, when I put the water in, that this one is gone. Otherwise, I have to take it out again. I have to, to cover it black with, with a adding pen. But uh, let's leave this uh, for the moment and hope that uh, the problem is solved automatically. These are the nicest problems that solve themselves automatically later on. And work on the rest. So on, on the left side, I'm quite happy because the my main light actually ends at the on the same uh, on the same spot like my uh, my pico light projecting attachment so this makes sense anyway here the the shadow on the left of the matte part i cannot really control this with my templates in the pico light because that's just um the shadow so if i have to to move this uh, this light shadow border i have to move the entire light and that's not what i want to do but Lucky me, it's here at, this, at the right spot. On the, on the right side, it's much easier. Here I'm illuminating too much, but there uh, I can adjust this very, very precisely with my templates. So I just push in the right, the left template a little bit. This means it closes on the right. Maybe just uh, five millimeter less of illumination. Let's try this again. Okay, good. So this before and that's now, right? Okay, so this is this outstanding precision. I mean, uh, probably we get later on the question. Um, let me unshare the screen. Probably we get later on the question. Yeah, that's all nice, but how can I do the pico light thing without the pico light? Well, and there, the answer is definitely you can't. If you want to have this, kind of precision in your light, you need the, the right light shapers. Otherwise, I mean, we, you can uh, work with grids and you can flag off the grids and work with mirrors and cardboards and so on and so on. But it's just, first of all, it's a, a never ending, a never ending work really. It's very, very time consuming. And I'm really convinced that you will never get this control and this uh, such a perfect controllable light. So um, again, those who know me, how I work, 
Um, if I don't need a specific light shapers, I don't do it. Uh, uh, do, don't do it with it. I, I'm very happy to work with diffusers. I'm very happy to work with black cardboard, with mirrors, and so on and so on. But in this situation, I think the only solution that makes me happy, that gives me the control I need, is really the Pico light with the projecting attachment. Right. So, um, so with the bottle, I'm more or less um, happy. What comes next is the problem of the shoulder. So the shoulder still reflects my point up there in a very unpleasant way. So first of all, I take this light away by adding here a flag, because if it's black, I can do something new. I'm not depending on this light up there. So the first step would be black, but I do not do this with a black flag because otherwise that's, that's pretty much the, the color for the rest of the afternoon. But I'm going to put there a, a white flag. Okay, so with the white flag, I, I block the light coming from the back, but then it allows me to add additional light from the, from the front. So this is just um, a lightweight cardboard. As I said, the first step, I have to make sure that it's in the right position. Which is the right position? It should not block any reflection on my acrylic but it should block all the reflections on the top of the bottle. And this means that I probably have to reposition this uh, several times until it's exactly doing what I want it to do. Of course, you could try this uh, through the camera and um, chase your assistant around. Um, still lives, especially still lives, I really uh, enjoy doing them by myself um, without an assistant, because most of the time I don't really know how I get the result. It's about trying out and trying this, trying something else until I find the right solution. So it's not like in fashion where I exactly know what I have to do, move this light to the left. So it's more like trying out, having some good music in the studio. That's why I work actually on product photography most of the time without an assistant. Okay, so I'm um, going back to the software, share, and there we are. Let me check if you see it. Yes, there it is. Okay, next test shot, just adding the flag. Okay, the first step is good. If I just, yeah, I mean, if I just go down a few centimeters, you will see the problem that it's probably still working on the shoulder but it's covering too much of the on the underground and if it, obviously if i go too high then it uh, the underground or the table will be perfect but the shoulders are illuminated as well so now it went so fast because i still i just in the morning i just put it aside so now it's probably a little bit too high because it starts reflecting here again okay so again again i go a few not a few millimeters but a few millimeters but maybe just one centimeter down all right good with this i can work so here it's okay here it's okay and uh, it's sharp as well yeah good and now um it's just black maybe i want it like this maybe not um uh, by the way when i see it when i look at my my uh, my bottle, I think it's a little bit darker on the right than on the left. Okay, so let me correct this first. What did I say? It's dark on the right. I'm just pulling now the, the, the Pico box a little, a few centimeters to the right. Hoping that this makes the light more even. Let me check. So before, now, yes, okay. So this was really just one centimeter of movement. And now it's, the light is more evenly spread. So that's better, but I was not working on this, on that I was actually working on the, um, on the additional light for the white cardboard. So um, that's why I have the second power pack with the force lamp head, P70, narrow grids, and the, the point is that this light is actually below the table, uh, or almost below the table. If I'm too low, 
it the table actually creates a shadow here right so um, i will have a problem on the on the left shoulder so i have to make sure that this is uh, properly illuminated now when i go go up a little bit it's still not hitting the table but when i'm unlucky it hits the bottle so and these are the things um as i said we just have to try out so number one does it do what i want it to do and second does it do anything else that i do not want it to do so let's check this last light okay yes and no yeah yes i get it here uh yes i get it here as well i get it here twice i get it once twice so this was not here before huh? oh, okay there's uh, something that's here already and uh, let's say if we look at this uh, that's definitely um something that i would say okay this is probably a photoshop thing i could of course run around in the studio and check out where is this uh, reflection coming from i guess one of the uh, metallic um stands over there is is most probably causing this this is quite dominant as well up here for me this is uh, very tricky to to retouch so um, on for this reflection, I definitely would like to tear, take care photographically and not in post-production. So what's the problem? The problem is that this lamp head is not low enough, but I can't put it lower, otherwise it does not illuminate this anymore. So I have to block the light differently. And I do this like this. So I put this here. And then put here a black flag right the other way of course hoping that I don't move my pico light I'm still blocking this one so I move it so the light now hits the cardboard but it still hits my bottle as well maybe okay something like this it's quite it's a little bit tricky that's why i have to maybe to correct it several times because i have a huge light down there uh, that I actually need to film the entire story um, if I work for, for myself in the studio, of course, all the lights are down, and then the modeling light tells me much more what's actually going on. But uh, this time it's a little bit like a blind flight. So that's why I need a few more test shots. On the other hand, hopefully this is interesting for you guys. All the struggles I have. All right, good. Next shot. Okay, much better. Not perfect yet. It didn't affect here the shoulders. Yep, shoulders are still there. Better, but not perfect. But I'm on the right way. A few centimeters more to the right. And then, yes. Okay. Let me check. Ah, still one. So let me see from the camera where this is coming from. It's actually, ah, okay. It's not a left-right thing anymore. It's a vertical thing now for a change. Very entertaining. So it has to be lower. And now I really hope that it's low enough because here it's the, the end. I can't get lower, otherwise the, the, the Pico light is in the way. So pray with me that it's gone now. Okay, lucky me. Okay, good. All right, good. This we take care of. Um, here it's under control. Exposure-wise, maybe a little bit more. One, two, three, four, five. Half a stop more on the shoulder. This is now just, uh, I, I'm not going to meter it. This is just uh, opening my eyes, looking what I want. I, I think it's, it's more fresh like that. 
I tried this as well with an entirely um, white shoulder here, but in the end I went for, for this with the black uh, rim because it's, uh, it's still nicer if you have actually the dominant black contour all around. So I leave it like this. Let me uh, change a millimeter up or down with this flag. Maybe I can even avoid retouching here. Maybe, if not, it's a simple area. Okay, it uh, doesn't really help because going up, it doesn't help because now I get, uh, I get another mistake here. So this was a bad idea, so I go down. Again, this two centimeters, now even three centimeters. Let's have a look what this does. Oh, lucky me, okay, perfect. Okay, so it was uh, not what I expected, it's just the other way around, but that's exactly how it works, at least for me in the studio. Uh, it's drying out, and you see the mistake. Um, be honest with yourself, uh, I'm absolutely sure you see the problems you have in the, in the shot, and even if you can hide it in front of your client, don't do it, because the client will still have the feeling that something is not right, so go after it. Um, move things around in the studio as long as it takes until everything is perfect. And now uh, just this uh, one centimeter further down, just solved this problem photographically um, without any um, retouching I have to remember. But what I see now is here. Huh? Okay, so my work is not done yet. So on the left, on the right side, it's hanging too low. So maybe I have to bring it up a little bit only on the right side because on the left I need it in the low position. So let me let me check. Okay, so here it's solved. Here will crop anyway, and this is still okay. All right. So exactly. So it's really just about the the position of this little cardboard back there. Um, colors. So the the lighting is more or less done. And I will make the, the gray balance actually now quickly. Sorry, I forgot this. I will just make the gray balance, otherwise I forget it. So how do I do it? I don't do it on the background. I make the gray balance on the object itself. Okay, make it here. Because the, the object, I mean, is just a black bottle, so this should be neutral. And then if I look at the background, it's a little bit warm tone, and uh, especially with uh, male products, with male perfumes, I would rather go on the cold side. Oh, I didn't. Okay, I think I'm abbrechen. Okay, I guess I didn't share it before. I just made, it, made a gray balance on the bottle. And now I'm going to add it's just a quarter blue. It's just a tiny little bit of blue that I'm going to add to this light to make sure that it's not for sure not on the warm side, maybe a little bit more on the cool side, on the cold side. And this might absorb a tiny little bit of light. So maybe I give it just a two tenths more, one, two. Shoot it again so we will see that we have a tiny shift color temperature wise on the background. Uh, to the cold. So now I make sure that I do share it. Checking my second screen. Yes, okay. And so this is what we had before with the gray balance. So I just picked this one. And then you see if I go to the background, it's a different story. Okay, so I, what I really trust here, of course, is the object. So I go on, on the object, make the gray balance there. And if I get the readings on the lower right side, RGB, red, green, blue, it's 86, 86, 86. So perfectly neutral. And now with the blue filter on the background, we just have this tiny cold shift on the background. It's not really a blue effect. It just uh, cools down the entire shot a little bit. Right. So I'm more or less there with the lighting. Um, of course, I still have to work with the water. But as I said before, I would like to answer a first uh, round of questions at that moment. I have four questions that came in already. Let me start with the, the oldest one. Uh, is there any reason that you do not use an extension tube on your camera? 
Um, most of the time, as I said before, I use um, uh, the, the 120 millimeter lens uh, because I can get closer because it's a macro lens. And in this situation, um, I could actually use an extension tube. That's right. The, the reason why I don't put it on is I don't have it. Very simple. Okay. So if I, if I shoot close-ups, I would, would rather use the macro. What I do have as well is a, a, a tilt shift adapter, but this uh, works better on the 80 millimeter. It turns the 80 millimeter into a 160. Um, but um, as I said, from the from the distance, it just worked out nicely. Um, but of course, a, a tiny a tiny extension tube of a few maybe a centimeter or so would have made sense here. But I don't have it. Okay, next question. You can actually try and get black blue tack or uhu black prop tower on the black tech, instead of coloring the gaffer tape black. Ah, okay, yes, of course. Um, of course, that down here I could I could do something. I could take a different material. It worked perfectly in the morning. I know there are different solutions. Um, um, as I said, I still hope that this problem is solved in five minutes when I have water in the pool. Would the screen work with a pico box if I don't have enough acrylic? Um, yes, if the if this uh, how do you call it? Uh, if the screen has a high optical density. So there is uh, one screen back here. Let me show this to you quickly. So like this one here, and this has a very low optical density. You can easily see my hand through. Okay, so this would definitely, definitely not do the job because you will have uh, you would see a very clear um, picture of the the pico box. So it has to be a high optical density like the acrylic but if you have this or if you take a if you take a double or a triple layer it will work perfectly as well so i somehow destroyed my camera yeah now it's it's with sichtbar yeah okay um sorry for that um what i showed you let's do it the other way around Obviously, I can't move the camera, but I can move my screen. Okay, so if you have such a screen, it's nice because it's it's very big, but it has a very low optical density, so you can see my hand um, through. And this means that if I have a pico box behind it, you will still see the very sharp edge of the pico box, and this this doesn't really bring anything at all. So that's why um, your diffuser has to be uh, of a high optical density. That's why I have tons of acrylics around in my studio. So maybe this falls, I don't know. Right, good. Then, no, we have two more questions. How to calculate one tenth of a stop in Scoro? Uh, no calculation at all, just pressing buttons. Um, I don't know if you see this. Okay, let me come here. I hope you see it. So now it's on 5.5. If I say I would like to have uh, two tenths more, I just press the button. One, two. So it goes from five point to 5.7, which is nothing else than two more, uh, two tenths more. Okay, and this, by the way, I can do independently on all three outlets. So it's very, very easy. If I would like to have a full f stop more, instead of 5.6, I would like to have six. Uh, 5.7, I would like to have 6.7. I just press the button long, and it gives me a full f stop more. And down again. So very fine, very easy adjustments in either tenths of an f-stop or a full f-stop, and this over a power range of 10 f-stops. So with the big one, I can go from 3,200 joules all the way down to three joules, and this in extremely small, precise steps of one tenth each. Okay, in the first set of why did you use a Fresnel attachment? Can we use uh, different accessories? Grid, for example, absolutely. 
actually what's coming from below doesn't really matter. It should be. However, I, I would not put it on the, on the Pico box because with the Pico box buff, it goes a little bit everywhere. But you can definitely use um, a grid for it as well. That's not a problem, but it should be a directed light. Why not use a second projection attachment for lighting the white shoulder card? Um, yes, why not? Um, again, the, the first reason I have um, actually, this Pico light is normally not here in the studio. I have only these two, and this means that I used all the Pico lights I have here in the studio. And the second one is what I said before, if I don't have to use um, special light shapers, I, I most of the time I do a lot with just normal uh, reflect and grids. And I think personally, I think that it makes a lot of sense that I show you what can be done without without the Pico light, just with, with a black flag. On the other side, I said clearly that if you want to have the control of a projecting attachment to illuminate the lower part of the bottle, then you need it. I think, um, of course, I have the I have the brown color T-shirt on. Of course, I'm kind of uh, sales support as well with my with my job here. But I do this. I try to do this in a very very honest way that I show you and explain where you actually need the, the specific light shapers and where you do not. Okay, I think, I hope this makes me as a photographer more believable than if I would illuminate such a white cardboard with another um, fancy piece of equipment. Okay, that's my approach, not only for webinars, not only for seminars, but as well in the daily work in the studio. Okay, there are the questions are coming in faster than I can answer them, which is good. Okay. And first set up, okay, now these are old questions, actually. Hi, Urs. Which one takes precedence? Build the nuances first or focus directly the light on the product? Build the, the nuance first. Okay, um, depends um, where do you start with. Um, for me, in this situation, it was quite essential that I have the background working first. Um, why the background? It's a, it's a reflective thing via the, the acrylic, and of course, it has an influence on the position of the bottle, on the background, the distance to the background, distance to the camera, the focal lens, the height of the camera. So everything depends on on angles. So if I set up a perfect light for the bottle, with with them, with my two pico lights, with whatever, whatever I do, and in the end, okay, let's let's go for the background, and the background doesn't work because I need a different position of the table or I need a larger acrylic. This means that all the work I've done so far is for nothing. I have to start again. Um, so I start with the, the, the light where I see the most problems coming from. When I shoot, for example, as a, as a different point of view, if I shoot white fashion and a white background, background, I start with the background because I want to have a white background and a black model. Only if I have this situation, I start working with the main lights on the model. Because if the background has any uncontrolled, uh, unwanted effect on the model, I yeah, I have, uh, I maybe have to change the entire set, take a further away from the background, add more black walls. So I always start with the with the tricky with the tricky light where I expect most problems coming from. Okay. Um, the stands are. Four mass stands, actually there are four bar stands, but I, I think that's probably what you mean. Yes, the stands are four bar. I mean, this construction here is four bar, the, the small stands, uh, this stand as well, this one here, I don't want to touch it because in the right position, all these are four bar stands. They, are, they work perfectly on, on a setup like this because we have all kind of little tiny micro booms. So uh, the, the stand is further away, it's not like a large, tripod that's always in the way so that's why uh, especially with uh, this kind of small setups i love them if i work for for larger sets uh, or if i have big soft boxes on my lights of course they are not stable enough they will fall or i have to run around with uh, sandbags and so on but for uh, controlled work like this they are just best choice all right good so if um, if we could please get a uh, read of all of the, the questions that are all answered now. Um, otherwise, yes, thank you. And um, I'm ready for the, the final shot, which means 
Um, I'm going for the water. I'm just pouring water in here. It really must not be a lot, like five millimeters, one centimeter is plenty. Otherwise I have to clean more. And I would like in the first shot, I don't want to move the water at all. I just want to let you see how the water is actually cleaning my table. Um, this means going back to focus. No, I did the same mistake again. Right, so now you have it. Okay, shoot again. So look at all the scratches, scratches are gone. Eh? And yes, my, um, my gaffer tape is gone as well. Okay, so no scratches, gaffer tape, water, no scratches, no gaffer tape. Okay, now what I see is that uh, here there's a kind of a uncontrolled light. Do you see this here? It's, it's brighter than that. This means that my projecting attachment pico light is hitting the, um, the water and then this reflects back but this can be taken care of by just closing a little bit one of the templates should be this all right somewhere around here again very tricky to see because the studio is too bright but let's have a look if this solved the problem so i'm talking about this here huh? yes okay good okay so again outstanding unbelievable the control you get from the pico light and now the fun part is to make waves now there are, there are two ways of course i could move the bottle but uh, moving the bottle you see how sensitive it is on angles and so on so i prefer not to move anything at all but the water so i'm going to use a screwdriver and i just tip in the water behind the screwdriver so um, in the end um, you don't see this huh? so duck out of the picture press button duck bam something like this all right, so let's get this done. Okay, I'm I'm really getting tired now because I. Um, sorry for that. I explained it again on the wrong view. So what I do is, I hit the water, bam, and then I press the button. So screwdriver. And I don't hit the, the water in front of it. I hit the water behind it. So, bam, making waves, screwed, a screwdriver out of the picture, and then I press the button. All right. Sorry for the confusion. Yes, now you see it. Okay, and I try to get this done now. I take the mirror of the camera up. Like this, it's more instant. I have more control about the moment of the shooting. Okay, one, two. Right, first test. Okay, uh, there we go. Um, not too bad for a first one, but definitely I would like to take a few more. It's a lot of waves. It's a little bit, probably there was a, a drop falling down. So let me take another one. And the third one. And hopefully a last one. Okay. So how do they look? Maybe. No, no. Uh, they are, they are, okay, I like this one best, but I, I try a few more where I actually come closer with my uh, with my screwdriver to the bottle. And I try as well not to make additional drops. Okay, one. 
three more two three four so I hope that I have one now which is probably not perfect but then okay so no this is definitely too too much here I feel like the this it's just a little bit too far in the back no ah. this one because uh, it's out of the frame okay big promise i shoot three more and then i choose one because from now on we learn we do not learn anything new anymore i just spent i just waste your time don't want to do this so just three more okay so i'm not i'm just pulling it away now okay All right, good. So that's it. No more nurse. Okay. Maybe this one. Uh, yeah. Okay, it would be it would be nice if I would have pulled it a little uh, out a little faster or that one. Here we have the, the the second the second waves as well from the from the water that that are bouncing back from the bottle, so why not this one? Huh? Okay, good. Last one it was. Always nice if we do something like this is a proper cropping at the end. Try to have it in the center, so just out where the rings end, and now we take it properly in the center. Drop down here what I do not want to see, what I don't want to see. Okay, good. And we have a final which is acceptable from the um, point of view that it's just, uh, let's say, just a webinar. So I would definitely spend more time to get the perfect circle around it. And I had, I did spend more time on this um, when I was preparing two days webinar the day before. Let me show this to you quickly okay so i'm going to change now to photoshop yep this one and then that's the one okay so that's exactly the what i've done Right now, from the lighting, it's just a shot that's um, 48 years, uh, 48 hours old, and I spent, uh, let's say, one and a half hours on it, retouching it, which is most of the time I spent uh, cleaning it from from dust, and then of course uh, the, the reflections on the left and on the right, I really made them, um, I made them nicer, uh, that uh, that they're fading away. Uh, more precisely, I made this line a little bit more straight. So just minor retouching, uh, as I, as you have seen it before. Actually, most of the shot is done in camera, and it's just minor retouching, mainly cleaning the object. Okay, so what I show during a webinar, that's of course it's everything um, pre-produced. So I knew more or less uh, how this is going to happen. I just had to rearrange and uh, main, make the fine adjustments of all the lights but of course when i do something like this um for myself in the studio it's not a question of 45 minutes it's a question of six hours okay and i think this could be interesting as well for you to see how it's actually the, the entire process when i go to the studio and for the first time i put this bottle on this black acrylic until i have this final result and um I pressed the button about 100 times, and in the end, I just recorded my screen quickly when I was uh, scrolling through all the, 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 the test shots. And that's what I would like to show you right now. Okay, so this is uh, one more time I go here for the screen sharing. 
just want to make sure that it's broadcasted. Yes, there you go for it. Okay, and then I take this movie to the beginning. So that's this what I did on Monday, trying out different things, failing, uh, trying a different solution, failing again, and then slowly, slowly, slowly approaching the final result with the right light shapes on the right spot in the right angle at the right distance. So it's just a lot of patience trying out, opening the eyes, and finding the solution that in the end um, works for me. So this is like, uh, as I said, like six hours, five, five and a half to six hours compressed into one minute. Until we get to the final shot. Wonderful. Okay. So stop the screen sharing. Yes. Um, I see there are uh, a few questions. Um, do you pre-plan to decide how many lights you use? No, I don't. I start with one light, and if one light does the job, that's it. Okay? So I only use the lights that I need for the shot. I don't think that the photograph is more valuable because I set up 10 lights. Okay? If, if it's one light at the right spot, it's exactly the same value like uh, having 10 lights. So it's really, I start, I have an idea in my head what I want to achieve, what is the mood or the look of the photograph, and then I start with this, uh, the first light probably that I have in my head, and then I, I add more lights if I have um, problems or if I have to uh, illuminate a certain area a little bit more, but um, I have no idea how many lights I will need in the end. Does it make a difference with which size of the handle of the screwdriver? and the ripples. Um, it's the, the first screwdriver I took in my hand, so I think, uh, and it works actually quite nice. Um, I don't think that the, the, the size makes a difference, because uh, as soon as I, I tip the water, I mean, I get, I get concentric circles of the, the waves all around. And of course, if I start with a bigger screwdriver, the, the, these, uh, these waves start already with a, with a bigger diameter, so I probably have to hit the button just one hundredth of a second earlier, but I, I think Honestly, the, the size of the screwdriver is the, the most unimportant thing here on this, on this shot. Which takes, uh, okay, this I answered before, and the, about the phobas stance we, we talked as well. So I think um, I answered all the questions live. If there is a question or if later on you have a question that you would like to ask me, Remember that I will be here in the studio once again on Friday afternoon, 2 p.m. Swiss time on the Broncolor Instagram channel. And there we, we, we chat about light. Uh, it will be live as well, like today. So answer me anything about the studio lighting on Friday afternoon, 2 p.m. Beside this, this was it. This was uh, the 10th webinar. Actually, I ran every, every webinar twice. So this was the the 20th show I had here from the studio. We got lots of feedbacks from you guys. Um, after this webinar, you will be redirected to a, a feedback um, page where you can uh, actually let us know uh, what you think about this kind of webinars and as well what you would like to see in future webinars. So the, the next series is not scheduled, but we will have a close look at your comments, at your suggestions, at your wishes. And we will sooner or later come up with a new series of webinar as well, most probably here from the studio. In the meantime, I would like to thank you very much uh, for today, for your, your time spending about one hour, 15 minutes with me on uh, just a perfume bottle. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for supporting the entire webinar series. Hope to see you soon again here from the Baronkula studio for the moment. That's it. Thank you very much. Goodbye. All the best. Ciao, ciao.